person just be mindful that you you note on your on your envelope or on your check in the memo section is for the church anniversary. And if you choose to give by Giveify, just make sure you note that as well in the note section for on the app for Giveify. So we just thank God that God is still working and the church is still active. And we just praise God. And we want to ask Brother Jerry Sherrod if he, if he would come and bless us and Brother Lynn Smith would bless us in song, amen. And then the next voice you would hear after the song would be that of our pastor, Reverend Mike Lay Pope, Sr. Amen. Amen. Again, good morning. And yes. Praise God. I want to bless and flow to our St. Paul family and friends. It's indeed a pleasure to be here one more time. I'll go if I have to go.
scripture. First, I want to share in the book of 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. I want to read one verse in your hearing, and that would be verse 58. And afterward, in our Lord's Gospel, according to Matthew, in the 16th chapter, verse 18. The Lord has blessed you, and you're able to stand to your feet this morning. Stand with me as we share the word of God for the people of God on this, our 153rd church anniversary. Hear now the word of God. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And in our Lord's Gospel according to Matthew in the 16th chapter, right at verse 18, it says, I say unto thee, Thou art Peter, upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to share reflections for this 153rd church anniversary. Like the theme, the church that won't quit. Church that won't quit. As we celebrate 153 years of ministry, It's not hard to understand that we owe a debt to those who have gone on before us, those whose shoulders we now stand upon. The torch has been passed to those of us who are alive on today. We must carry the banner to greater heights. To be able to carry the banner to greater heights, there must be no quit in us. Please understand that I want you to know that I know, and I hope that you know that there is no congregation that has never faced some adversity in life. Though all churches have had some difficulties, they've had some disappointments, they've had some dismal days. All pastors have had some trouble, some trials, some tribulation, some trouble sometimes. It knocks on the door of every congregation. Adversity sometimes sits at every pastor's table. Please know that because a church or a pastor is experiencing hardships, may either be facing contrary winds or being affected by adversity. It does not mean that the pastor or the church has been disobedient. Nor does it mean 
that the pastor of the church is out of the will of God. So sometimes it means that you're doing the right thing. But Satan is trying to buffet you. He's trying to disappoint you. He's trying to defeat you and to deter your progress. And that's why we say on today, there must not be any quit in you. As we reflect upon the thing, the church that won't quit, Let's look at what the church is and what the church is not. Contrary to the belief of some, we need to understand that the church is not an exclusive club, but it is an inclusive fellowship. In other words, the church is not a closed society, but an open fellowship. For at the heart of the church is the universal invitation, whosoever will, let him come. Amen. And so I just came by to remind us that the church is not for a favored group only. God is no respecter of persons. But if the church had to be labeled a club, then why not the whosoever club? God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that what? Whosoever. Whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. This in itself is the gospel in miniature that Jesus came and that Jesus died and that Jesus rose again and one day he's coming back for his church. Please understand furthermore that the church is not ours. Listen, we may even have the title or the deed to the physical plant, but the church belongs to Christ and to Christ alone. For it was Christ who said, upon this rock I will build my church, and that the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So Jesus not only promised that he would build his church, but he assured his disciples yeah. that the church would not perish. Sure, individual churches may close. Sure, individual churches may shut down. Sure, individual churches may perish. But it's the universal church that shall never perish. And I'm so glad this morning that we all are a part of the universal church. Yes, Jesus not only promised that he would build his church, but he assured us that his church would not perish. So whatever else the church is or is not, I'm sure that we can all agree that the church is the family of God. It's the family of God. As such one does not join in, but one is what? Born in. Or you must be. You have to be. You got to be. Don't you see? You must be born again. For one is born into the family of God. We are the physical presence of Christ in the world. 
them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. We are to occupy until he comes. We are to do business till he comes. For he is coming back just as he said he would. And so in that he is coming back, there ought not to be any quit in us. And so we are to share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Sure, ministry is difficult. We may even be tempted to give up. We may even be tempted to quit. But don't you quit. I just came back to encourage you today and say, hang in there. For even if it's difficult, you need to know that help is on the way. Yeah. Don't quit. I'm glad today that we have some examples of a church that won't quit. And a church that won't quit is one that preaches and teaches in the name of Jesus. For there is none other name under heaven whereby we must be saved and it's at the name of Jesus, for it's at the name of Jesus that every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So a church that won't quit is a church that preaches and teaches in the name of Jesus. And I'm glad for the example that Jesus gave. Church that won't quit is a church that preaches and teaches in the name of Jesus. And another example of the church that won't quit is a praying church. What's in the chap 12th chapter of the book of Acts? That King Herod had begun to persecute some from the church. And the Bible said that James had been killed by the sword. And Peter had been arrested and put in prison. Matter of fact, he was on death row. But the church, the one that would not quit, the church called a prayer meeting, went down in constant prayer and when heaven was about to bring him out, the Bible said that an angel of the Lord, he showed up and set him free. I thank God on today that the church that won't quit is a praying church. Church that won't quit is a church that preaches and teaches in the name of Jesus. Church that won't quit is a praying church. The church that won't quit is a church that don't mind praying and praising him. Listen, in that 16th chapter also of the book of Acts, after being put in prison for rebuking a spirit out of a slave girl, the Bible said about Midnight. About midnight, Paul and Silas, they were doing what they were praying. And not only were they praying, but they were singing hymns. And when you're singing a hymn, you need to understand that it's not about you, but it's all about him. Not only were they praying, but they were singing hymns to God. And the other prisoners, they were listening to them. And then suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundation of the prison was shaking. At 
celebrate, reflect upon these 150 years. I'm sure there have been times when the church wanted to give up. There have been times when the church wanted to call it quits. But we can thank God on today that they hung in there, that they continue to share the good news of Jesus the Christ. We thank God on today for a shared work and a common labor in the Lord. Sure, we stand on the shoulders of those that have gone on before us, but let us not grow weary in well-doing. No, we have no reason to give up, for we already have the victory. We're not fighting for the victory. We're fighting from the victory, for Jesus has already conquered sin and death. That's what Paul shared with them earlier in verse 15, uh, verse 3 through 4. He says, for I delivered unto you, first of all, that which also I received, how that Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. He died, but he didn't stay dead. No, he got up from the grave. And so Paul admonishes them to stay the course, to hang on in that. He says, no, be ye step back. Unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Yes, sir. Oh, that's what I would encourage us today. Be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. When you're steadfast, you're faithful, yes. and you're faithful and steady. You're fixed in the faith of the gospel that you won't be distracted. You don't lose your way. You don't turn back. You're faithfully steady. Are you faithfully steady on today? Be ye steadfast and then unmovable. Being able to stand against whatever the winds of life blow our way. Not being blown about by every wind of doctrine knowing that God will bring to completion what God has begun in them through Christ our Lord. This is more than a hunkering down. This is more than a holding on tight. No, they stood and they stood steadfast. They were unmovable and they were always abounding in the work of the Lord. Listen, there's a challenge that goes right through here. And when we talk about a challenge, we're also talking about competition. But please understand, I'm not competing against anybody. No, F.D. Sampson out of Houston, Texas, he reminded us of that, that we're not competing against anybody, but we're competing against ourselves. I'm not to try to outdo anybody, but I'm to try to outdo me. I'm to approve, improve upon me. I'm to improve 
of the Lord. And they can abound in the work of the Lord because they know what? That their labor is not in vain. Aren't you glad that only what you do for Christ will last? Aren't you glad this morning that your labor is not in vain? Because I know that my labor is not in vain. There'll be no quick in me. I won't give up. I won't throw in the towel. I won't call it quits. I'll hang in there because I'm always abounding. Abounding. Sure, this Christian walk is difficult, but it makes it all worth it because we know where the journey leads. And the journey, it leads home. Oh, this is not our home, but we are just travelers passing through. And as I pass through, I'm on my way home. And maybe that's why Paul broke out in the Thanksgiving. He said, but thanks be unto God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. No, anybody know that they got the victory this morning? No, anybody know that they already have the victory, and it's through our Lord Jesus Christ. He keeps on giving us the victory, victory over death, victory over sin, victory over the law, victory over the grave. Is there anybody here that don't have no quit in them? Yeah. If you don't have no quit in you this morning, go on and praise him for 153 years. Tell him thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. And thank you for your loving kindness. One day, he's coming back. Our job is to be ready when he comes. Can you praise him this morning? Can you give him glory? Can you give him honor? Can you be steadfast, unmovable, and always abound in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain. Let the church say amen. amen. Let the whole church say amen. amen. Praise God.
that you would join us on that call as well on Wednesday at 7 o'clock. But again, we say thank God and have a blessed day. Amen. Jesus is